So hello and welcome back. Today we will have lecture 2-1B on probabilistic robotics Bayes formula. There will be an introduction to Bayes formula and we will also use normalization and marginalization to find the probability of X given Y. And we will then extend Bayes formula by using background knowledge and modify the law of total probability by using conditional independence. I would like to note as usual that some of the content from this course comes from the work of Sebastian Thrun, Dieter Fox, and Wolfram Burgard in their work, Probabilistic Robotics, Intelligent Robotics and Autonomous Agent Series. And if you would like to know more about that, please check out their website at probabilisticrobotics.org. So Bayes' formula states that conditional probability is commutative, and we can see this by using the formula where the posterior is the probability of X given Y, where we're gonna assume that it's easier to find the probability of Y given X than the probability of X given Y. So using the joint probability that the probability of X and Y is the probability of X given Y times the probability of Y, which equals the probability of Y given X, is the, times the probability of X, then we can come up with the posterior, which is the probability of X given Y, by using the likelihood, the probability of Y given X, times the prior, the probability of X, divided by the evidence, probability of Y. So using the marginalization to find P of Y, we can find P of Y by using the summation over all X of the probability of X and Y, which can also be written as the summation over all X, the probability of Y given X times the probability of X. So let's assume we only have two values for X, true and false. So to simplify Bayes' formula, we would have that the probability that X is equal to true given Y is just the probability of Y given X is true times the probability of X is true divided by the probability of Y. And we would also have that the probability that X is false given Y is the probability of Y, given that X is false, times the probability that X is false, divided by the probability of Y. So we can now write the probability of Y as the summation of the two terms that we had in the numerator, which were the probability of Y, given that X is true, times the probability that X is true, plus the probability of Y, given that X is false, times the probability that X is false. And from normalization, what we can do is we know that we can sum those numerators first and then we could use those to get the denominator P of Y. And we know that the sum of the two in the numerator is going to give me one because we only have two terms, X is true and X is false. So it may be easier to find P of Y by using these numerators than finding the probability of Y. So we have a constant eta, which we call the normalization constant, which is used to make sure that the sum of our probabilities is one. And using that, we can rewrite Bayes' formula, the probability of X given Y as eta times the probability of Y given X times the probability of X, where we know that eta, which is one over P of Y, is now just going to be one over the summation of the probability of Y given X over the probability of X. So notice here that we have now found a way to get the probability of Y that does not include finding the probability of Y. So if you think about this in terms of the discrete case for implementing this normalization, what you would do is sum over all X, the probability of Y given X times the probability of X. And then once you get that summation, you take the reciprocal of it and that's going to be eta. And then to find the probability of X given Y, you take that normalization constant times the numerator for that one instance that we want of X given Y. So a few things to note here. The probability of X given Y is not necessarily one for all cases of Y, right? It may be less than one because it's for that one specific case of X, not for all of them, for the Y's that we have so far. However, the probability of X given Y is one for all the possible cases of X as we saw when we did the derivation. And that's the law of total probability. So you know that if the robot is in the house and there are at least two rooms, what is the probability that I am in one of them, right? So given one condition, what's the probability of another condition? That's what we're doing here.
So you can also extend Bayes' rule with additional background knowledge. So let's assume that we have the probability of X given Y and Z. So Z is our new background knowledge. Then we have the probability of Y given X and Z times the probability of X given Z divided by the probability of Y given Z. If they are independent, we can also write the probability of X and y given z is just the probability of x given z and the probability of y given z because we're assuming that x and y are independent variables. And then from conditional independence, we would have the probability of x and y given z is equal to the probability of x given z and the probability of y given z as we just said because x and y would be independent. So I could also write that as the probability of x given z is the same as the probability of x given z and y, or the probability of y given z is the probability of y given z and x. So now, using that conditioning, our new law of total probability is now that the probability of x in continuous time would be the integral of the probability of x and z dz, or the probability of x is equivalent to the probability of x given z and the probability of z dz, or the probability of x given y, can be written as the probability of x given y and z times the probability of z given y dz. So this concludes lecture 2-1b on an introduction to Bayes' formula and conditioning. Have a robotastic day.